And we've caught up with the Conservative candidate here in Eaglescliff, that's Stefan Houghton, uh, who's running for parliamentary election for Hartlepool's MP on December the 12th. Mr Houghton, thank you so much for your time when I know it's just so busy. Um, I have to tell you, there's still a lot of confusion in Hartlepool about your candidacy. Ralph Ward Jackson put out this video, and of course, Ward Jackson, a very well-known name in Hartlepool, to say that he was standing uh, for the MP, and uh, then that sort of disappeared, and then when it was officially announced, it was your name there instead of... Uh, it's Mr. A bit of a Ward Jackson's. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was totally surprised. What what happened? You know, all, all I can say is it was an administration error, and uh, unfortunate. But these things do happen, and this unfortunately happened at the last moment. So I was a bit of a last moment. So, chewing, so really. you you didn't think well, you know. Hartley Paul, I know I can change it. Were you sort of put there by Conservative Not really. headquarters? Um, no, um, I'm a known quantity within the Conservative Party. I do live in oh, Stockton and Tees. Absolutely, yeah. And which isn't a million miles away from Hartley Pool at all. I'm reasonably familiar with the Hartley Pool constituency. So, in fact, I'm probably a better candidate than the person who was originally going to stand, as I am a lot more local. Right. So, an error of the paperwork led to someone else and that someone else was me. Okay. What, why did Conservatives feel they needed to stand in this seat though? Because a Conservative hasn't won there since the 1960s. So why put somebody in? Uh, the Conservatives put a candidate up in every constituency in England, Wales and Scotland. Hartlepool is no different. So Hartlepool got a Conservative candidate. All oh, right. Well, cause it, he... I mean, honestly, that is the case. The Conservatives will put up a candidate in every seat. And uh, as I say, Hartlepool is no exception. Okay. We wouldn't want to deprive... I mean, at the end of the day, the Conservatives could well, well form the next government. And if we hadn't given the residents of Hartlepool the chance to vote Conservative, it would have been pretty poor form. Right, OK. Um... And we can also win Hartlepool as well. So another reason to have a candidate. Uh, the other thing, uh, sorry for pressing you on this, but when we were trying to get hold of you, we tried the local Hartlepool Conservatives and we didn't even get a response from them. Uh, so we had to f fiddle around on the, the web to try and get a contact for you. Because you've stood instead of Mr Ward Jackson, is there a rift? Are they helping you with your campaign or is there a rift between the two of you? No, no, not at all. Um, no, I got on perfectly well with the association chairman. Right. Um, no, no rift at all. Okay. No, that, that's the honest truth. There, there isn't a rift. So when, when they came to you and said, hey, you're a last minute candidate for Hartlepool, did you think, oh no, or did you think <laughs> yes? No, I thought yes. Um, if I thought, oh no, I would have said, I don't want to stand. Hmm. But I, I think I'm a good candidate for Hartlepool. Um, I am a councillor. I am passionate about local service. I'm passionate about the North East. Mm. I'm passionate about Teesside. So standing really wasn't um, daunting at all. OK, yeah, so you're, as you said, you're currently a councillor for Middlesbrough. Uh, Eaglescliff in well, Scotland. Eaglescliff, yeah. Um, you're also the election agent for Simon Clark, who was the MP who's hoping to be re-elected for Middlesbrough South. How can you be a, a, you know, an agent for him and canvas in Hartlepool as well? Um, quite easily. Uh, in the Middlesbrough South East Cleveland constituency, where I've been helping Simon for the past two years, we've built a structure that a lot of the election machine can work in my absence. Uh, for instance, in that campaign, in the last five days, we've delivered various leaflets uh, coming to a quantity of about 39,000 in five it, days. That's, got, that's in Middlesbrough, not Hartlepool. Uh, that, that's in Middlesbrough. So right. what I'm saying here is that we've got a structure in Middlesbrough, South and East Cleveland, which can work in my absence. So yes, I can oversee what's happening, but I've, I can, I've certainly got the time to walk, well, not walk away from that campaign, but step away. Mm. Uh, and safe in the knowledge that it's still going to function and go to Hartlepool as much as I can. What do you think you can do for Hartlepool? As a Member of Parliament? Mm -hmm. um, I think I can work as a Conservative Member of Parliament for Hartlepool, 
better than the previous MP could with Ben Houchen, the Tees Valley Mayor. Mm-hmm. I'm a Conservative. He's a Conservative. There's likely to be a Conservative government after the general election. As a Conservative for the town of Hartlepool, I can work with the national government. So working together, I'm pretty sure that I will be able to lobby more effectively than Labour could to achieve more resource for the town. And as you've been knocking on the doors in Hartlepool canvassing, what do you perceive is some of the main problems for the town? One of the main ones, which has certainly got me thinking a lot, is the unemployment rate. It's higher, much higher than the national average. And if I'm elected, doing my utmost to try and address that is very high up my list of priorities. So uh, the unemployment issue is uh, number one, really. Uh, Brexit naturally has come up as well. But just taking Brexit away from the uh, question for now, unemployment is the ultra-local issue. You have a very good hospital in, in Middlesbrough. Um, James Cook, and without doubt the lack of a fully functioning hospital in Hartlepool is hugely distressing to the people there. What inroads do you think realistically you can make that other MPs haven't been able to do? I would, I'm pretty confident that if I'm elected as the Member of Parliament for Hartlepool, as a Conservative, working with a Conservative government, I can lobby more effectively than the previous Labour MPs have to get more resource for the hospital in Hartlepool. As you say, it's it's a completely undesirable situation that there is a hospital in the town that can't provide all the services or anywhere near enough the services that the people require. It's much easier said than done saying go to North Tees and yeah. Stockton on Tees. It, it, it's, it's 25 minutes away. Yeah, it's it's not good enough. Uh, Simple uh, as that. And uh, I really uh, I've said to... this to, to other candidates as well, because we need for you to really understand what a hardship this is. Do you really get what a hardship this is? It's, it's, it's just awful what people have to go through in Hartlepool. I, if I can give a personal illustration to try and demonstrate that I do understand. My partner and I, we had a baby boy about three months ago. Um, it was an incredibly fast labour. By the time we got from our house in Eaglescliff to North Tees, 10 minutes later he was born. Mm. We live about 10 minutes, 15 minutes from North Tees. Had, for instance, we had to drive to Hartlepool, he would have been born in the car. Oh yeah. Um, we benefited from having a hospital nearby. Mm. That's just one example of why you need, need a hospital. It's it's not good enough that all the residents in Hartlepool okay, I, just I, don't I, have I, a local hospital. I, I, more I, needs I just done. needed for you to get it. Yeah, well, well as I say, I have had this illustration in the context of childbirth where it was very useful having a nearby hospital. Had it not been as close, we would have been in dire straits. Mm. Um, there's all sorts of reasons why you need to get to hospital and incredibly quickly. And it's easier said than done, saying so just go to... North Tees and Stockton. Another issue that puts stress on hospital beds, jobs, school places, what is the Conservative policy on immigration now? The Conservative policy on immigration is they would like a point style system similar to what they have in Australia, which appears to work and that is what the government will do if it's elected. You may have seen in the manifesto that the Conservatives are going to recruit 50,000 nurses. Mm -hmm. There will, obviously that's quite a number, a number of those, uh, a significant proportion of those will be from overseas. We've got to be realistic with immigration that some skill sets we don't have enough of in this country are readily available. So immigration is a good thing Mm -hmm. in many ways. Is there a a, a number? Are you capping it at a number? There there was a number. I I believe it was... 12,000 off the t- top of my head. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong on that, but it was there or thereabouts. Mm-hmm. So, yes, immigration certainly got its advantages and it provides a solution for getting the nurses that we need and quickly. Yeah. I, somewhere in mind, I thought it was 50,000, but I, yeah, I. Yeah, 50,000 nurses, but the, where they would come from cap, would cap be. Immigration. Some would be from immigration, some right. would be from 
student nurses, others would be from keeping nurses on that may be on the verge of quitting or getting former nurses back into the health system. Sure. Um, this referendum, to a greater degree, is about Brexit. Were you personally, did you vote for leave or remain? All those years ago, when there was a referendum, I voted to remain. Um, I think there were strong arguments on the Remain side, there were strong arguments on the Brexit side. I made my decision. Mm -hmm. However, where I am now is I am resolute that Brexit has to be delivered. It, there, there was a referendum, there was a result, and that's that really. It has to be delivered. And if I could go back in time from what I have seen over the years, I wish I'd voted Brexit originally. Mm -hmm. But um, again, this is, this is my position now, and I am determined that if I am elected as a Member of Parliament for Hartlepool, I will support the government's Brexit agenda, which will be to deliver it as fast as possible. Okay. Um, obviously, Hartlepool has some unique crime problems. Do you have any thoughts on policing in Hartlepool? I suppose policing ties into some of the problems that Cleveland police are having. Um, structural problems with the force. There's talks of amalgamating it with, well, doing away with it and amalgamating it with North Yorkshire, Constabulary, Durham, perhaps. What I see happening now, though, is we have a new chief inspector who is speaking the kind of language which resonates with most people, and that's more police on the streets. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that. We're seeing new police stations open. And my position would be to work with the Chief Constable to see more of that in Hartlepool because that's what residents want to see more of, more actual police. Um, if the Conservatives don't get an overall majority, who would you like to be in bed with? It's very difficult to say. Um, that is a difficult question, isn't it? <laughs> well, in the past, there was the coalition government and yeah. with the Liberal Democrats in mm. 2010 to 2015, and that mm. worked. You know, it was a stable government for five years, but the Liberal Democrat position on Brexit is completely at odds with the Conservative mm. agenda. So it's it's hard to see how we could work as coalition partners. SNP, they would come with a price, yeah. and that'd be a Scottish referendum, another Scottish referendum, and doing away with Trident, mm. neither of which is acceptable to yeah. the Conservatives. The, so, so it's, it's, <laughs> running this, out of options, This one out really. of ev everyone is a, such a difficult election, isn't it? Just a quick quiz that we asked uh, another candidate that uh, didn't live in the town. Sure. Uh, can you name the famous cartoon character's statue at the headland? Oh, actually, oh. I bet you're too young. Well, Did I'm you know? 34. Uh, yeah, so. well, it's handicap, but probably it's us old uh, phobies yes. that yeah, know too that. too young, I would say. Um, Hartlepool United mascot. Um, Hangus the monkey? Oh, yes. And the big hotel in the centre of town? No, oh, it's near it's, the Civic right Centre, isn't it? It's, it's um, right next to the Civic Centre. It's a grand hotel. Grand Hotel. Yes. Yeah, all right, you got it. Listen, thank you so much for your time. No, you're uh, welcome. We, we appreciate it. Um, finally caught up with you. Yes, finally. Um, I'm sorry for the wait. Oh, not at all. And uh, just to give you another update, that's five out of six candidates. Only Mr. Kevin Cranny of the Social Labour Party. <laughs> Please like and follow Hartlepool TV on Facebook and YouTube.